Okay, for this lecture, what we're going to be looking at are the appendages, things outside the eukaryotic cell. Now, these structures are going to have um, names similar to what we've already discussed in a previous chapter with bacteria. But here, the composition, their movements, and their well, overall methodology will be different than what we saw with prokaryotes. First off, you look at uh, the glycocalyx. Not all eukaryotic cells are going to have a glycocalyx, just like not all bacteria did. Those that did, well, it's going to be a different set of proteins, a different set of sugars than we saw with the bacteria. Its purpose, again, is protection. Protection of the underlying cell, protection of the plasma membrane and whatnot. But here, it's to keep away everything bad it's to protect from You've got to remember these are going to be bigger cells these bigger cells can themselves be prey animals to larger cells to multicellular organisms that are looking for a quick snack so these glycocalyces are going to be a protective layer for that now when you look at those organisms that have something outside of the plasma membrane. All living cells have the plasma membrane. All eukaryotic cells have a plasma membrane. But if they have something outside, some protective layer, again, it's going to fall into two camps, just like we saw with prokaryotes. A slime layer and a capsule. The slime layer, it's a loose assembly of sugars and proteins that are very hydroscopic. That means they pull in and they hold water so they don't dry out as easily as other cells will. That water they're holding is also going to be available for the underlying cell. Now the capsule, this is going to be more arranged. This is going to be more of a protective covering. By being there, it's going to make it difficult for other cells to eat them. That's what that phagocytosis you see listed right here. Phago Cytosis. Phagocytosis means cellular eating. Big cells eat small cells. Big protists eat small protozoa. Amoeba eat anything smaller than them. By having a capsule, it's hard to eat. It's a crunchy outer shell for you know, lack of a better example. Now, from our standpoint of this course, we're looking at things that cause infection to us humans. We're going to see that some pathogenic organisms are going to have some form of a capsule. Now the capsule, you know, they can call it a capsule, they can call it a pellicle, they can call it something else. It's going to depend on whether you're referring to fungi, protist, what species of protist. It will be a distinct term for their coating. It's going to be mostly sugars with some proteins holding everything together. And it's all about avoiding immune clearance when it comes to our infections. So when you look at it, plasma membrane, there's going to be chitin, the same stuff that makes up the crunchy shell for insects, a bunch of glycoproteins, and then glycans and a glycocalyx. Glycans are going to be a sugars, a bunch of sugars that are strung together like carbohydrates. And then the glycocalyx where they're going to be loosely assembled. So this layer upon layer upon layer, only certain things can pass through this outer glycocalyx. Only certain things can pass through this inner glycan layer. The glycoproteins are going to keep out certain things. The chitin is going to keep out more and more. So it's layers of defenses. Now, some eukaryotes will have a cell wall. You're going to see this in fungi. You're going to see this in uh, plants. You're not going to see this in animals. Okay, all of our cells are squishy, squishy. Uh, the whole point of cell wall is right there. Support and shape. Help support, help to maintain the shape of that underlying cell. Now, do not mistake the cell wall of eukaryotes to that of the prokaryotes. The prokaryotic cell wall 
is completely different. The prokaryotic cell wall is going to be formed of peptidoglycan, whereas for the fungi, we're looking at chitin or cellulose. Chitin. Chitin, as I just mentioned in the last slide, that's what, you know, insect shells. It's the primary component of those. Well, we see it here in fungi. For algae, well, cellulose and pectin are going to be the most important things here. One of the most important appendages, one of the most important things you're going to see on eukaryotic cells protruding out is going to be flagella. Flagella, just like we talked with prokaryotic cells, is for locomotion. Cells need to move. Cells need to be elsewhere. But the thing is, when you look at the difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryotic cell, it's what are they composed of? Prokaryotes, flagellin. Eukaryotes, tubulin. Prokaryotic flagella is going to be outside of the cell, whereas for us eukaryotes, the flagella is actually inside. It's a protrusion of the cell out. As I told you in lecture, for prokaryotes, their flagella basically whips around like you did when you were a little kid whipping around a rope, a jump rope or something, a belt. Well here, the flagella for us eukaryotes does not spin. Okay, cannot spin since it's inside the cell. What it does is it moves back and forth. Your textbook says it's like an oar, back and forth. I like to think of it as kind of like your legs when you are trying to swim in the pool as you sit there and kick your legs back and forth. That's the same movement. Where the prokaryotic one was just a collection of proteins, that flagellin out. Here, we're going to see it's a bunch of microtubules forming this, what they call the 9 plus 2. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus two in the center. Nine plus two, nine plus two pairs. As you can see here, the plasma membrane actually just protrudes up and around. So the flagella itself is not going to break. The flagella itself is part of internal structure. Any damage gets repaired for the eukaryotic flagella. Whereas for the prokaryote, since it's outside the cell, it gets damaged, it breaks, well, just replace with the new. Not a problem. Here, it's different. As I said, don't think of it as spinning around because that's not what it does. It's like when you were kicking your legs the last time you went swimming. Up and down, up and down. Except it's more of a wiggle causing the cell to move forward. Cilia are a shortened, condensed version of the flagella. Same 9 plus 2. Same stru internal structures, but here, think of it as kind of like you waving your hand. That's what it is. Hold your wrist in place and then just wave your hand. Mostly through your fingers as you're waving bye to somebody. That's exactly what it does. Now, whereas one flagella is enough to move a cell, cilia, no. One's not enough. As you see down here when you look at like this paramecium. It's going to take dozens, hundreds, thousands of them all over the cell, all working in concert. They work in a series, so that way they're moving. They're not moving the cell, they're moving the water directly around the cell. They move enough water, they cause propulsion. 
So, structurally similar, but much, much shorter. More numerous.